Hello. In this video tutorial, I will show you how to use open topography to perform vertical differencing of LIDAR topography data that is part of the US Geological Survey 3D Elevation Program, or 3DEP, or part of the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration, or NOAA, uh, data sets. After I show you how to use this tool, I will go over some background material on vertical differencing. As of summer 2023, vertical differencing between US to USGS and NOAA to NOAA LIDAR topography is now available over an area spanning at least 20% of the US's lower 48. To perform this differencing, you do need an open topography account. Currently, this uh, NOAA to NOAA and USGS vertical differencing tool is only available to our academic research and educational community, as open topography is primarily supported by the US National Science Foundation. We are looking at ways to make this tool more broadly available in the future. I will now show you how to conduct vertical topographic differencing on open topography. The first step is to go to opentopography.org. You do want to make sure that you are logged in to your academic account. You can uh, make an account and log into Open Topography by clicking uh, the My Open Topo. The next step after you are logged in is to go to Data. Clicking Data will take you to this page that shows all of the topography data available through Open Topography. So we will zoom in to the US. And then the data sources are shown here. And in particular today, I would like you to pay attention to these green data sets. These are from the USGS 3DEP. And then also these blue data sets that are from NOAA. And in particular today, we're going to look at differencing data sets from uh, the USGS 3DEP. And in particular, we're going to zoom into Jacksonville, Florida. And we see over Jacksonville that there are these uh, several data sets that overlap. So we're going to put a box along the coastline. So we'll say select a region and then dry box. So now I've told the open topography that I'm interested in conducting differencing over that specific area. So the rest of the options are gonna focus on that area. So you'll come down here, you can look in point cloud data sets, and then on the right, you'll see this option for differencing. So say we click the 2018 data set. So this will then assume that we're interested in performing differencing over that area that I selected using this 2018 data set as one of the two data sets. So then here, this is the data page where we'll have several options to set to conduct our differencing. And again, we're assuming here that we're interested in using this 2018 data set as one of the two data sets for the differencing. So here we are, you can select a different area um, as long as it again has that same overlap with that 2018 data set. Say perhaps I'm interested in just this area. And come down here. And then I have the option of selecting the other data set for differencing. And in this case, the only other data set that overlaps the data set I selected on the last page is this 2007 data set. So that's selected by default. And these gray data sets overlap that 2018 data set that I selected, but in different areas. And so I could difference them, but I have to go back to the page before and select a different area. I will now review the rest of the options that we have for conducting differencing. So here we'll see that we're presented with metadata about our two data sets. 
So we see the survey date of the 2018 data set as well as the 2007 data set. Then presented with uh, metadata about the horizontal coordinate system. And in open topography, you ultimately perform differencing in the local UTM coordinate system. And that's what the data, that's the coordinate system that you'll receive both the data sets in as well as the differencing results. And here are the information about the vertical coordinate system. And uh, this, yeah, so this represents the best metadata that we're able to access for those data sets. And to perform the topographic differencing, if the data sets are in orthometric coordinates, we remove the appropriate geoid and ultimately perform differencing with both data sets in ellipsoidal coordinates. You'll see here that you have, uh, or I've selected about 38 million points for the differencing. We have the option to perform differencing with ground points only. This would remove points from vegetation, from buildings, um, and again, leaves us with only 8 million points. But let's do differencing with the full data set. We have several other options. This option in window two is to select a different resolution for the DEM. The default resolution is one meter for the majority of our data sets. And I typically like to leave the resolution as the default. You can define a minimum level of detection. So in this case, we will mask out points that have differences below this minimum level of detection. And uh, four, for visualization, here you can uh, have options for customizing the hill shade that's displayed with the differencing results. We can leave those as the default. And then uh, finally, you can select, type in a job title, say, Florida differencing. Uh, your email will be there displayed by default, and then we'll press submit. So now the computers at the San Diego Supercomputer Center are working hard, and they are going to be getting the data, conducting the differencing. So you can leave this page open, and the differencing results will be displayed when they're done. You can also check your email and you will get an email that tells you when the differencing is done. So here are the differencing results generated by open topography. This page will be displayed when the differencing job finishes. You can see information about the data sets used in the differencing. Here is the reference data set or the later data set. Here's the name of the compare for the first data set the title that we entered, and then the duration. So the processing took 213 seconds or about three and a half minutes. You can download the data from the differencing results. So this includes both of the digital elevation models as well as the vertical differencing raster. Can then visualize the differencing results. So this shows the differencing results where red represents erosion, otherwise the downward movement of the Earth's surface, and blue represents uh, deposition or upward movement of the Earth's surface. And so here we can see what the change looks like. And then if you zoom down, you can see hill shades of both the reference data set as well as the compare data set. I will now go over some background material on vertical topographic differencing. So typically in vertical differencing, we begin with two point clouds. First, we have a point cloud for the pre or compare data set. So this is the first data set, and that's shown here. And the first step is to then take that point cloud and produce a raster grid of the elevation. Second, we also have a uh, reference post or second uh, point cloud data set, and that's shown here in pink. 
And then we take that point cloud and produce a raster data set on the exact same grid that we used for the compare data set. So those two grids have to have the same bounding area as well as the same resolution. As you can see here, the reference or the pink data set often has a higher resolution and sometimes lower error. So often this reflects the higher quality of LIDAR over time. And so it's just good to keep in mind that topographic differencing often involves using data sets with varying resolution and varying quality. So once we have those two grids, we can perform a raster subtraction. And in this case, the difference is equal to the reference minus the compare. And the results can be shown here as consistent with open topography's color scale. The blue represents upward motion of the ground surface. So this could be a new building or a deposition. And then the red represents downward movement of the Earth's surface. So for example, the removing, removal of a building or erosion. And then an option is to mask out errors that are below a particular threshold that is input by the user. So in this case, these black, er black areas all had a low absolute value of vertical change, and therefore they have been masked out. Now I'll go over some examples of vertical change. This first example is looking at USGS three depth differencing of a uh, cliff, cliff collapse in San Diego. And in this case, we have a compare data set from 2006, a reference data set from 2016. And then here is the vertical differencing. And we can see these red areas, which represent removal of material along the cliff. And we can see uh, that there's a small change in shape of the cliff between the compare and the reference. And that again is then shown in the vertical differencing plot. This is a second example. This is looking at differencing with two NOAA data sets. In particular, this is looking at urban development in Seattle. In this case, the compare data set was collected in 2000 and 2001, and the reference data set in 2016 to 2017. And here are the vertical differencing results. In this case, this shows a lot. Recall blue is um, a new building, for example. And so we see, uh, here's the port of Seattle. We see some new cranes. We see changes in the stadium and we see quite a few new houses and buildings and other types of infrastructure in this area. And I'd like to point you to several resources from open topography that you can use to learn more about uh, topographic differencing. So at opentopography.org slash learn slash differencing, you'll find a page with lots of material on differencing, for example, blog posts, tutorials, conference presentations, links to our differencing code on GitHub, and an undergraduate differencing classroom exercise. This is all available on open topography. And here is a open access publication written by the open topography team that focuses on the on-demand vertical and the 3D topographic differencing. And so if you're interested in learning more about the tool and the workflow behind the differencing, I highly suggest that you check out this paper.